Hi, my name is Will John from ADAS, and I'm here to introduce Nick and Pat Bean's talk on integrated pest management. <clears throat> Prior to the talk, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about European Innovation Partnership Wales. So what is EIP Wales? Well, the role of EIP Wales is to introduce innovation and new ideas to farm and forestry businesses. It provides an opportunity for groups of farmers and foresters who want to trial innovative techniques and technologies at a practical level within their businesses. With close to 46 projects approved, covering a wide range of topics, including dairy, red meat, forestry, poultry, and horticulture, EIP Wales is now closed to new project applications. However, those wishing to develop new ideas to improve business or performance should continue to contact Farming Connect. And to view all approved EIP Wales projects, please search EIP Wales on the Farming Connect website. So we have six examples of EIP projects which are horticulture based, and I'll spend a few minutes talking about these prior to handing over to Nick and Pat. But the one thing that has come out of all these projects is great grower cooperation, which is fantastic to see. So starting off with potato blight control using components of indigenous non-food waste plants. Um, well, this completed project, which has been managed by Tony Little, aims to trial the effectiveness of an environmentally sensitive biopesticide control of late blight in potatoes to replace formulations of copper, which is a toxic spray currently used by organic farmers. Alpha heterin, which occurs in common ivy, was extracted and formulated as a spray for blight control. In addition, OptiYield Diamond, which is a biostimulant product based on phosphonate, was tested in a combination with heterin and on its own to explore its efficacy with respect to managing blight on potato crops. The project also wished to explore whether there's a synergistic relationship between the two products. I'd encourage you to track down the final report online, but in summary, the report suggests that on its own, Hederin does not give comparable control to standard conventional programs and to copper in organic systems. However, it could well have a role to play in integrated disease management programs, for example, in combination with resistant potato varieties or when mixed with OptiYield Diamond or similar products. Moving on to computerized weeding in organic horticulture. <clears throat> the ability to source labor and certainly skilled labor in many horticultural sites can present great difficulties. This project therefore wished to hire in a robotic weeder onto two small scale horticultural units in Monmouthshire to, to test its efficacy. While the weeder was known to work successfully on flat fields with precision planted modules, our initial trials in the dry weather of 2018 were not successful. Variable plant spacing, undulating topography were two reasons why the machine didn't operate efficiently during this trial. Now, we wish to learn from that experience and bring the machine back next year. And we intend to ensure precision planting and have chosen fairly even ground so the machine will have every chance to work efficiently. We'll also look at alternative methods of weed control for organic systems and are therefore looking forward to next year's trials. Moving on to small scale organic asparagus. <clears throat> well, high establishment costs and a long wait for first crop are reasons why many growers don't wish to grow asparagus beds. So this project has benchmarked establishment and development of three varieties of asparagus on two small scale organic sites in Monmouth on two different soil types. The first small harvest was 2020 and certainly yield was good and demand astronomic. So we're looking forward to the main, the first main harvest in 2021, and outlining successes and failures along the way 
in a report with an indication of payback and return on investment. Micronutrient management in cucurbits. Pumpkin growing, as we know, offers a great opportunity for growers in Wales. Blossom end rot is, however, a big problem for pumpkin growers. And this project looks at the impact of foliar sprays containing calcium and boron to see if it can reduce incidence of rot and improve shelf life. Harvest in first season has just finished, so it's too early to see the results for year one. However, an interim report should be published prior to Christmas showing provisional findings. Photoselective films. Photoselective plastics contain additives that allow the plastic to selectively transmit or reflect choice wavelengths, creating a modified spectrum of light reaching the crop. Salad leaf products hinted on the potential of color, flavor, and peak life condition. And this can be subject to rapid declines after harvest. This trial therefore looks at three different films over three seasons to see if there's a potential for light manipulation to improve profitability of salad production through enhanced flavor, color, or appearance, nutritional value, or shelf life. We've just had the first harvest, and there are certainly visual differences. We're looking forward to finding out more about nutritional differences as the, as the results come back from the labs. And finally, integrated pest management. Uh, Nick and Pat Bean have been successfully growing vegetables and soft fruits in Pembrokeshire for many years, leading the way in business development. This case study describes their involvement in a European innovation project led by ADAS, which will improve the knowledge and experience of integrated pest management with the ultimate aim of reducing pesticide usage and waste. So with no further ado, I'll hand over to Nick and Pat. Hi, I'm, I'm Nick. And I'm Pat Bean, and we live at Springfields in Manabir. We've been here uh, for about 40 years, I think, uh, but we, it was a journey to get here. We, we, we met at the uh, University in Reading, uh, and uh, at the end of that period in Reading, I, I came to Aberystwyth uh, to work on, uh, on, on, on potatoes, uh, uh, carrying out agronomic research. At the end of that period, that uh, we, we started to grow uh, crops in our own right. During the period of time that Nick was doing agricultural research, I was bringing up a very young family and I was growing crops on other people's gardens and garden plots that they didn't want. So during that time, we moved from Aberystwyth to Pembrokeshire. We, we were lucky enough uh, in the early 80s to buy uh, 15 acres of, of reasonable land uh, close to where we were living uh, and with our background and uh, what we wanted to do with our lives uh, this, this was ideal it wasn't too big it wasn't too ex too extensive it was more in scale with what was going on uh, in the area at the time and we thought we could manage it. So many people told us at the beginning and many times whilst we've been here that it was a bad idea and we couldn't do it and it wouldn't work and soon enough we would fail and we'd have to find something else to do. The bottom line of course of growing is it, it, it has to pay doesn't it so we, we, we had to start with crops which were uh, fairly short annual crops short-term crops annual crops um, like cauliflowers and potatoes. Those early years were really very difficult we came here with no facilities and we lived in a caravan and the family was very young so the input that I could give on the business was limited but as Nick has said we always grew crops which gave us a fairly quick turnover and after a few years we realized that we could invest in crops which were a longer term like asparagus and daffodils. We 
initially sold what we grew very locally. It went to small shops, of which there were, there were many in the local towns. But we always had our own farm shop, and so we sold directly. And initially, we weren't big enough to sell in larger volumes. But that changed. As we got established, we had to start selling through the wholesale system and into a wider market. The strawberries that we grew, first of all, were Cambridge Favourite, which is a very old variety, and it was grown on a matted bed out in the field. And we've ended up with growing a, a very productive varieties which need high inputs on tabletops in the tunnels, which gives protection from the weather to the crop. And it also gives the crop everything that it needs, the food, the, the light that it wants, the warmth. And so you get a better quality of product. In the past, we had a different approach to managing pests and diseases. The philosophy was spray and pray. Uh, you, we, we, with the strawberries, we had simazine, we had ben, uh, benlate, and we had HCH, and that's what we did if we had a problem. Um, but I, I never really fully subscribed to that. I, 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 th I think uh, we, we, we could never be described as all organic. But uh, we've always understood from our, our agricultural training that uh, there was more to more to pest and disease control and management than than, than spraying. The the way to control the problems is to understand the na nature of them, and and it takes a, it's a different approach. We imported with one lot of of strawberries uh, phytophthora um, in the strawberry runners, and that crop failed and it put that field out of production for more or less permanent as far as we were concerned. It was one of the factors that encouraged us to move um, into uh, substrates, artificial substrates and indoors. In the blueberries we had very shortly after we started growing we had um, almost insurmountable problems with, uh, with fine weevil. Uh, and, and we very quickly had to resort to uh, biological control for those. We realised that the, the, there was information out there, and uh, but actually we needed a little bit of help in implement, implementing uh, best practice. And so we, we, we asked a consultant to come and uh, uh, field walk our, our crops with us, and uh, he did that, and uh, he's been with us ever since. Keyword keyword is integrated, isn't it? Or integrated in management. Um, it's not just about not using an artificial pesticide at the, as, as, as your first alternative. That should always. I mean, it's on the bottle. You should all. That should always be the last resort. There are plenty of other things you can do uh, to make the crop happy. The, the, the crop the crop is going to be m more prone to problems if it's stressed in any form so you would take away all the stresses you you want a nice laid back crop don't you we've got two tunnels which are pretty much identical this is our tunnel the other tunnel is adast we use our system that we've evolved over the years and they use the one which they would recommend in that situation. At the moment, there, there are virtually, there are no pest and, pest and disease problems in either house which are causing us any concern. But over the, over the spring and the summer, we, we, we've, um, we've uh, introduced quite a lot of predators and I've used quite a lot of biopesticides to control um, particularly mildew, but also botrytis. We haven't used conventional pesticides since uh, early May. We've relied on these other things since about the 10th of, 10th of May. Um, the first thing we introduced was uh, Phytocelis, uh, and that, that had four doses at regular intervals in the early part of the year to make sure we didn't have a problem with spider mite. So that we just put that on with a shaker bottle down the row um, in the evening, so it's not in the bright sunlight. Then we had uh, introduced um, several things to control aphids, and we did have a bit of a problem over there with aphids, but it did get cleared up when we put the predators in. And that was a mixture of parasitic wasps and lacewing larvae and one or two other things. We just had to make a little bit of wire and hung it up and opened the door 
came in a post, stuck it in like that, and they crawled out and we didn't see any more aphids. The other thing that we had to take care of was because this is an everbearer crop and you've got flowers from the word go right the way through the summer, we've still got it, uh, thrips can be a problem and the thrips feed on the flowers and they cause misshapen and bronze and fruit. So you do, you don't want that you've got to you've got to deal with that and to deal with it with pesticides actually is well nigh impossible and um, so you introduce predators the first thing we introduced was uh amblyceus cucumis again the first introduction was through a shaker and you introduce a lot higher number of of, of amblyceus than you do the phytocelus and then following that you put in sachets and they've got um, the early life stages of the amblyceus in the sachet and you put one of those down every meter just drop them in the and that, that that's a follow-up uh, following that um, in the ADAS trial they put in another one uh, called um, an aureus which is very susceptible to pesticides it's very easy to kill it off we didn't put that in there we didn't have a problem with thrips but they did that in there it's sort of belt and braces approach um the other thing the the adas monitor said we got white fly in these tunnels so they introduced something which has been around for a very long time uh, encarsia which was supposed to control white fly we still got a bit of white fly but it never came to be a problem in the strawberries it's more of a problem i think we think the problem came with the pink cuttings we grow pinks in there for the farm shop and we think they came with the pinks we put those in and maybe it's reduced the population it hasn't controlled it now, um, the other thing that we looked for in here and we actually probably wouldn't bother with if we were keeping the crop over the winter we would put in nematodes to control vine weevil larvae because we would tend to put these troughs outside to make sure they got a little bit of cooling in the winter it might be too warm in here in our winters so we will put them outside then they will get eggs laid in the troughs and we would need to put nematodes in to control the larvae otherwise it will kill the kill the plants probably uh, we, we won't have to do this because this crop will be replaced we will throw these out in november probably clean up the tunnel and uh, that's a, a very important part of our husbandry is when we finish cropping all this goes out and it's taken away so it's away from the uh, from the cropping area and we will sterilize it with um, deer sun red or something like that so make sure by the time we come back in here in February it's all sterile and we're not carrying pest diseases over. Now the disease side um, when you buy runners uh, you're lucky if there isn't a very small proportion of uh, crown rot fight fight off for it so uh, we would have given these uh, a drench of um, a parat uh, to control that right at the word go probably the day or the day after we planted and that's got a 35 day harvest interval so by the time we get to cropping there's no residue problem so that would have controlled that and we wouldn't have needed any other form of control the two diseases which would cause us concern it uh, would be botrytis and mildew and there are biopesticides now uh, which we can use in combination or on their own um, at a uh, about we usually I aim for about an eight day interval and I use either one or the other biopesticide and alternate that with um, potassium bicarbonate which is a commodity subject, substance um, it's not a registered pesticide um, and it that has it, it is fairly innocuous potassium is probably quite a good form of nutrients and that raises the pH on the leaves and that makes the makes the leaves a slightly less hospitable place for mildew it, it's supposed to be an eradicant but it's certainly controlled mildew between a pesticide application so we do one pesticide application which is um, AQ10 and Serenade together uh, then we do a, 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 a potassium bicarbonate application and then in the following eight days we would use um, Amino X uh, and then we would repeat that cycle again.
So that, go, that will take us right the way through the summer. A mantra is, is, is quality, continuity and reliability. We realised very quickly that there was no market for class two. Everything had to be class one. So if we couldn't produce something which wasn't class one, then it, it, there was no point in us growing it at all. So for the EIP product, we had to monitor every fortnight for leaves from each plant. We had to look, look at the leaves both sides and see if there was any green fly on it or green fly eggs on it. And we also had to look for any red spider mite, which are little tiny, tiny little red. You can't really see the spiders. You can just see little red dots. If you have a hand lens, you can see the spiders. It's, they're not so tiny, but they're, they're tiny. We also had to look in the flowers and have a piece of white paper and knock it out and see if there are any thrips. And there is a thrips just there. So one of us would look for these things and the other one would just score on a sheet to make a record of whether or not we could see it. The fourth thing we had to look for was notching on the leaves, which show us the presence of vine weevil. So through the whole season as well, whilst I've been picking the strawberries, I've also been picking off the dead leaves. I usually pick with a wheelbarrow with my trays and I just put the, the dead leaves in, in the wheelbarrow. And the other thing that I have been doing also is cutting off the old fruit trusses where, the, where I pick the fruit and any rotten fruit so that it keeps the whole plant clean because although these biopesticides are really useful and they do control our pests and diseases, if you leave rubbish in the plant, it just makes their life very much more difficult. You can put nutrients on, you can put these elicitors on, um... And they, they help the plant resist some of the problems like mildew and botrytis. And also they can change the physical nature of the, of the crop. I have one which is very, very useful. It actually makes the skin of the, the, the cuticle of the strawberry more elastic. I've just got a, a few products here which I use regularly. Two of them are actually registered as pesticides, although they're biopesticides. Um, one, well, one of them is a biopesticide, the other one is an, el an elicitor, but it's registered. Um, it, this is AQ10, which I use for controlling mildew in the strawberries. It, it, I'm allowed to use it 12 times in a crop, so that's very useful. Um, it's compatible with other biopesticides, um, and it, it, it uses a very tiny amount. To, to, to spray the three tunnels, I use something like five five grams of product so it goes quite a long way um, all, all the instructions are on the back about environmental protection resistance storage mixing and spraying you just treat it like a conventional pesticide um, one thing with this product you actually have to soak it for half an hour or 40 minutes before you apply the uh, before you spray it on so it has to rehydrate and this product is is a new one to me. It's Romeo. It's it's uh, it says on the packet is a host plant defense inducer to protect blah 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 um, uh, strawberries diseases from from uh, downy mildew, powdery mildew, and botrytis. So that, that's the idea of this. It, 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 you have to apply it on its own, um, but it it should enhance the ability of the crop to resist these disease problems. So, and the third product is that I use for a very long time is called Pretect. Uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's a harbin protein. Again, you have to leave it for a while to rehydrate, for half an hour to rehydrate before you spray it on. But it, it also contains um, trace elements, iron, magnesium, magnesium, zinc, and copper, which so you make sure you, your, your, your plant is, is uh, fully up to, uh, uh, fully supplied with what it needs. But this has the, has the, the, the property of making the, the, the fruit more elastic so that it's more resistant to damage. Um, it has a better shelf life. Um, it, it's a, I found it a very useful product here in strawberries. The best advert you can have for your produce is that it's class one and, and the buyers, the intermediaries are happy with it and the customers are happy with it. And if it's labeled 
as it should be. People know where it's come from and they look for it. And there was one lady who came here who, who lived in Pontypris and she said, oh, wow, I found the Springfield strawberries. Your strawberries are legendary in Pontypris. <laughs> Not We're not complete. proud. We looked we looked at the labels on the spring onions in the supermarkets and we thought, oh, that's a good idea. We could do that for the strawberries and that's what we did on the daffodil. Our products have little labels in with our photographs on. So and... if, if, you, if, you, if you label individual packages like a pint of the strawberries or a, a bunch of asparagus or a bunch of daffodils, that label's there. And if, it, if it, we found that if... Um, we put a, a, a personal label on with actually one of us or both of us we're even better because we, yeah, we would we were we were in that direct contact with the consumer weren't we we've got here hybrid blueberries there are three varieties across here to give it a sequence of fruit the interesting thing from our point of view is that they don't appear to have a lot of pests and diseases in our environment and um, the only thing we have to do is to make sure that vine weevil don't lay eggs at the base of the plant and the grubs, the, the, the larvae, um, eat the roots. So we, we use nematodes uh, to treat that several times a year. But apart from that, they don't have any um, any pest and disease control. And uh, we, we do have to feed them a little bit, but um, they seem to be quite, they stay quite healthy. And these plants have been in the ground at least 10 years. Um, to control weeds, we, we do quite a bit of hand weeding, but we use wood chips which we generate from the hedgerow uh, offcuts during the winter and compost a bit uh, to keep the weeds down under the bushes in the meantime. Uh, uh, they've become increasingly popular. We, we, they replaced for us black currants and gooseberries which seem to go a bit out of fashion. Uh, these nice things that they, the, the market is changing it's always evolving now they get bigger and bigger and bigger in the in the supermarkets so we've had to change the way we prune them to make sure we get fewer bigger fruit and actually change some of the varieties so we've got a better mix of of product the net is to keep the birds out the birds love them you know that's... and worse than that the, the the badgers also like to get in so we uh, and they they they, they'll demolish the net and let the birds in. So we have to put a, a, a second rank of protection, which is an electric fence, keep the badgers out so you don't damage the net. So we've got a, a, a proper barrier for the birds. We were definite at the, at the beginning uh, that, that we should grow daffodils because it's such an important flower in Wales. And of course, we started off in a fairly small way uh, and, and we made some mistakes. What we didn't realise uh, initially was that um, a, a daffodil was a daffodil in Wales. It was not a fancy type. It, it, you, we couldn't really sell um, anything in any quantity unless it was a yellow trumpet. And, and uh, it, that, 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 that sunk in over the years and we ended up with a preponderance of yellow daffodils, but we could sell them for six months of the year. We were very lucky that uh, stopping with one supplier coincided with having two producer groups ask us to produce Welsh daffodils for their sales. Uh, so we, we, we did it, we were up to, we, we, we knew the discipline that was required and we had, by that time, we had assembled the, 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 the cropping system to be able to supply what they want. And so the, the, we were delighted to do it. It meant we could put Welsh daffodils into Welsh supermarkets. Because uh, the daffodils are propagated as a bulb, um, it, it's a continuous process and it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a very attractive target for, for, for a virus. And you, you can very rapidly build up virus um, contamination in, in daffodil stocks and some of them we were able to buy virus free stocks vi well virus tested mother stocks uh, they're not actually virus free but they're uh, to all intents and purposes they're virus free and that they, they, they we, we bought we purchased some of those they they, they cost us a thousand pounds a kilo but we multiplied them up and they multiplied up fantastically quickly because they were so free of virus they were so very vigorous
So they're a brighter yellow, they're a taller stem, they don't have stripes on the leaves, that they're, they're all together yeah. better, bigger buds. Yeah, but there was there was a cost, of course. We had to we had that period where we had to multiply them up and not pick the flowers or or, or whatever. And we had to make sure that we restricted any ingress of virus as well. We had to rogue them and we had to make sure we handled them separately and the pickers always went in with clean gloves and all the rest of it. Our third fruit crop is cherries and uh, uh, we've had to uh, take a fairly radical approach to the cherries. I'm just about to hang up uh, a monitoring trap for spotted wing Drosophila which we it's not a problem here for us, so we don't see it, but we keep monitoring. And if we did see it, then we would start to get worried because there's not a lot we can do about it. These are planted on a dwarfing root stock and they're tied down at the top and grown it on, a, on an angle so that it takes the vigor out of the top end of the plant and produces lots of side branches. And we can reach here to pick everything. We don't have to get off the ground. What hasn't worked here is our mite control. And we'd never, We've never experienced two spotted mite um, as a problem in the cherries this year, but in this patch, this row here and at the top, in this variety, Regina, it got on top of our um, regular um, pest and disease control. We don't. Uh, we do have to control um, botrytis and uh, brown rot uh, with conventional fungicides during flowering, but after that, we use a combination of the bio fungicide which effect, were very effective for doing that but we didn't really have an effective control of the mites we spotted it back in uh, in early in may and uh, i consulted our consultant and he said he, he was aware of it but it was not a problem that they've come across very often but it was increasing and he suggested um I used, come repeatedly with bio um, insecticides and these packets, which are um, self-release packets of Amblyseus andersoni, which should have um, controlled the mites on the leaves, but they, they didn't. We hang them up at various heights at fairly regular intervals um, back at the end of May, and it didn't stop the crop being defoliated by the end of picking. We did manage to pick most of the fruit, um, but there was quite a bit of spoilage, which we very sadly had to eat ourselves. That one is work in progress. The cherries are far too valuable to uh, not pick and sell, so uh, we will we'll pack it. I, I'm standing in a, a tunnel now, which has got um, heritage cherry varieties in and we're trying to use a modern method of growing with these uh, traditional varieties they've got special characteristics which are useful they're said to be disease resi resistant and uh, have a better a superior flavor to the modern varieties well the uh, they certainly don't have resistance to black cherry aphid because you can see the damage up here um, which we didn't do a great job of controlling, but if they if we get better control of bacterial canker in here, we'd be very pleased. That's our story up to now at Springfield. So we, we can see we're still optimistic. We still recognise the challenges, uh, but we we don't feel we're not alone, and we feel as though we've got some uh, some important supporters, and uh, some of the most of the problems that we can foresee are, we can overcome, and. Uh, we look forward to a challenge.